All right, so today we're going to talk about how we can reskin our game as it currently is and turn it into something like this that looks a little more like Candy Crush. So stick around, and that's what we'll do. Okay, uh, welcome back. So today we're going to take our game as it is right now, which is relatively plain, and we're going to reskin it so that it looks a little more like Candy Crush or what we would expect a modern mobile match three game to look like. So right now we've got this kind of minimalist aesthetic, which I actually kind of really like. Um, but that minimalist aesthetic isn't necessarily what everybody wants. So um, what we're going to do is just kind of go through. I've made some art assets that you can use if you want to, um, or you can use your own art assets, or you can kind of leave it the same. There is, however, um, a caveat, a warning I would give if you wanted to leave all of these assets the same, and that is that the way these colors were chosen, I chose them because I thought they looked nice. 10% um, of people in the world are colorblind, which means that 10% of your potential player base is colorblind. And if 10% of your player base is colorblind, in order to not um, hamstring yourself, you want to make sure that you're taking into account whether or not your game is colorblind friendly. And I haven't run this through anything to see if it is, but I'm willing to bet it's not. Uh, I have a lot of uh, reds and greens and a lot of things with green tones in it. And uh, people who are colorblind are usually red, green, colorblind, having a trouble distinguishing between red and green. And so matching games like this can often be a nightmare. The kind of elegant solution that uh, was employed starting with Bejeweled is not just having the colors be the same, but also have the shapes for each color be distinct. So Bejeweled would have um, each jewel have not only a different color, but also a different shape. Well, maybe Bejeweled wasn't the first because Tetris Attack did that. I don't know. Anyway, um, just having another signifier to show which are the shapes that match one another. So that's what we're going to get at today. All right, so first thing I want to do is in my art folder, I'm going to create a new uh, folder, and I'm just going to call this uh, New Art, which is where I'm going to be putting all my new art. I haven't put any of it in here yet. I did, however, make a folder uh, on Google Drive that has all of the um, new images I'm going to be using. And then today, I just really quickly went through in Affinity Designer and made this uh, kind of blurry background. That's going to be the background image I'll use. So first, let's uh, let's grab those. So I've got my candies. Um, <laughs> that's something for something completely different, but that's cool. All right, so I got blue, green. I'm gonna grab this orange because I made some changes to it, background yellow and red. And I'm gonna grab the top UI as well. I might as well put that in today. So I'm gonna pull all of these into my scene. I'm gonna let it think for a second. Uh, okay, cool. So the first thing I wanna deal with is the background. So for the background, I'm gonna create a, do, 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 how do I wanna do this? Yeah, I'll do it this way. For the background, I'm going to create a canvas. Um, and I'm going to do some changes to this canvas. I don't want to accept it just as it is. I want to change the render mode from screen space to uh, world space. And my event camera is the main camera. Actually, I don't want it to be world space. I want it to be screen space camera. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted. Um, I'm going to put the order in layer at negative three and I'm going to, okay. So order in layer is just to make sure that it shows up behind. If we take a look at our prefabs here, um, my dark green dot, it's order in layer is zero. I want to make sure that anything I put on this canvas, which is going to be my background canvas, I want to make sure that anything I put on there appears beneath all of my other pieces. So I gave it a negative three. I could give it a negative one. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, and then I want to do my canvas scaler. And this is how it scales with the um, screen size. You can set it to constant pixel size, but that's not great because 
if you have one phone that's super HD and one phone that's no HD, um, your images could look really, really tiny or your text especially could get messed up. So I'm gonna change my UI scale mode to uh, scale with screen size. My reference resolution um, in my game here, I'm doing 10 by 16. So my reference resolution is gonna be a multiple of that. I'm gonna use, um, let's do, 500 by 800, even though pretty much everybody has a phone that has a higher resolution than that. And then you can choose if you want it to match the width or the height. I want it, I think it's more important for it to match the width, so I'm gonna keep this all the way over here, but it's, it's a slider. You can have it completely match height, completely match width, or have like a preference of the one or the other. I'm gonna keep width as my preference. Okay, in this canvas, I'm gonna add an image and I'm going to, so I want this to stretch the entire screen. Mm. Oh, that's what I meant to hit, that right there. So if you click on the Rect Transform and then hold down Alt, you can swap between moving the anchors or stretching it. And I stretched it to be the entire screen. I'm going to go into my uh, new art folder and I'll just drag my background image onto it. So there we go. If I play my game now, I'll have this as my background. And already it looks a little more like a match three game. My dots look especially bad now though. Um, all right, cool. Now, next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my prefabs and I'm going to take my dot and I'm going to choose for the green. I'm going to choose a different. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, that's. I don't want to change the material. I want to change the sprite. So I'm going to change it from dot to green candy. And then one thing I want to make sure I do here really quickly my OG dot is set to 768, which means I need to set these to 768 too. I don't have to worry about the top UI or the background. Seven, six, eight. Um, and I'm going to turn on MIP maps. MIP maps are the simplest explanation. Are it's a way to do a level of detail so that if you have it, um, so that the pieces would be really small, the detail isn't necessarily lost. It kind of automatically interpolates. So I'll apply that. And I'll go back to my prefabs, dark green dot. Okay, that's going to be that. I'm not going to use green dot. Um, did I call them blue? No. So I'm going to make the indigo dot my blue candy. And I'm going to make the orange dot, which isn't orange anymore and has been orange for a long time. I'm going to make that my orange candy. My red dot is going to be my red candy. My, let's see, salmon dot. Let's make that my yellow candy. Uh, then I want to go to my board. I'm going to change the size of my dots to zero. And I'm going to be using just the ones that I have here. So, okay, cool. So board, I'm going to lock this in. I'm going to use dark green. I'm going to use indigo, orange, red, and did I make this one the yellow one? I forget already. Pull those over. Uh, let's unlock it to make sure that I chose the right dot for my salmon dot. Okay, cool. Um, the other thing I have to do here is change all my colors back to white because these are colors that are being laid over that um, that sprite. So maybe you like how it looks with that, but I want it just to be just to be white. And that'll let the actual color come through. So white, white, white. I'm not using that one. I am using this one white. All right, cool. Uh, let's hit play and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, cool. So some of my pieces either didn't generate 
they generated in the wrong place. So let's see what's up with that. So on my board, actually, okay, so one, zero, one, two, three, four. So one, four. It's supposed to be a green candy. Oh, okay, and that's what's going on. So um, the breakable tiles are showing up on top of it, which is why that is happening. So go to my prefab here, breakable tile. I'm gonna set the order in layer to negative one. Um, it's interesting I haven't had that issue come up earlier. Hmm. Okay, cool. So I still have the same old effects I was using before. Um, so that's not super interesting. And it would be nice if I had a little background here to these. And when I get the rainbow dot, uh, it's still that other thing. So I should make a replacement for the rainbow dot as well. Um, all right, cool. So other than those two big things, uh, it's working like it should. All right, cool. So I want to do a couple things here really quickly. First, I want to resize my board. I think it's a bit too big for using only five candies. So I'm going to make it uh, six by eight. Let's see what that size looks like. Uh, six by eight will give me 48 candies. Seven by 10 gave me 50. Oh, and my board layout, I'm going to set back to zero. Um, that's why I got that index out of range exception because I had my board set up so that if it were a bigger board That looks pretty good um, Yeah, that's not too bad Okay, now what I want to do now Is I'll deal with my board layout later. I want to add a top UI thing So this canvas is going to be only for the background So I'll rename it as background canvas. I'm going to create another canvas. So UI canvas. And this is going to be for my top UI. And in here, first thing I'm going to do is, oh, before I do even that, I want this to be screen space overlay. Um, I don't need to worry about the sort order since it's always an overlay. I'm going to change it to scale with screen size. And my reference again is going to be 500 by 800, which is a multiple of 10 by 16. And I want to match the width. All right, so I'll double click on that so that I can zoom way out to see it. And I'm going to insert in here. I can either do a panel or an image. Um, the only difference between the two is the way that um, Unity sets up the initial version of it. But I'm going to go with image here. I'm going to bring this all the way up to the top of the screen. And I'm going to drag it out to the sides here and a little bit down. Let's see what height do I want. Let's set it at 128. So 500 wide, 128 tall. I might want to go a little bit bigger than that. Let's go 256. Um, the reason why is I know that looks like it's going to be encroaching into everything there, but my image that I'm using is 256 tall, so I think that's actually going to be fine. So I'm going to pull this onto my source image. All right, and let's hit play and see what happens. <laughs> okay, yeah, too big. So let's do 256. Let's go back to 128. That looks scrunched, though. Uh, let's see, what's 64 plus 28? Uh, 192. Uh, okay, cool. Let's try that now. Okay. Uh, still a little too big. The other thing I can do, I have all this space at the bottom, is I can change the way that I'm doing my... Um, my uh, camera positioning. So if I go to my main camera, and I want to look at my camera scaler script, I can always have it 
up a little bit. So like, do, do, do. okay, I'll come back once Visual Studio is opened up because I hadn't opened it yet. Okay, um, welcome back. So I'm going to make, in the camera scaler script, I'm gonna make another little variable here. I'm gonna call this uh, public float y offset. And by default, I'm gonna set it equal to one. I can change that in Unity, of course. And then when I reposition my camera, my temporary position is gonna be y divided by two plus y offset. Uh, let me save that. And that should work. I haven't actually tested this yet. So let's jump back in here. Let's let that save. And then let's hit play. Uh, do, 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 do. Maybe. I'm, I'm just too impatient, I guess. I don't want to hit it again because it's going to unplay it. There we go. Uh, okay, so one is a little bit much. So let's go back to our main camera here. I'm going to set this to 0.5. And that should be better. Let's check it out. I don't know why my computer's chugging today. There we go. That's good. Now, if I wanted to, I could have another little bottom panel here for power-ups and stuff. But this is a pretty good start. Now, I want to fill in like my empty spaces, my breakable tiles, all that. I can still do that because um, I haven't changed really any way that the board is doing stuff. And my matches will still work. Um, I don't have that weird cream look. I still only have these arrows. So if you want to replace those tiles with something that will make that cream look, we can talk about how to do that. Because right now that looks pretty dorky. Also, we don't have an actual like background separating this from the real background. So it would be easy to make just like a little trans, almost transparent, translucent black tile to go on here. But my idea for this was to have a move counter up here, move or time, depending on what the level is. On this side, we'd have score with delineations for one, two, or three stars. And then on this side, we'd have what needs to be collected still. So we have this kind of multi-purpose panel already set up. Um, and then, yeah. So already this looks pretty different from what we've been doing. It looks a lot more like, like an actual Candy Crush game. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Um, and I have my Discord server link in the description down below. I also have a link to the GitHub, which will have the most current version of this later today. Um, and my Twitter handle too, if you want to follow me on Twitter to find out as soon as I post a new video. Other than that, I hope you have yourself a wonderful day, and we will see you soon.